Hey guys, my name's Joe. I'm a husband of one and a father of five, and this is my farm. And we burn wood here, but we don't have a wood shed. So let me show you how we store our wood without a wood shed. So I, I, I made a video a while back about our portable uh, wood pallets that we use and I didn't come up with this concept um, and I think with each person with each size tractor with each what have you it's going to change um, so so there's there's your disclosure like it's not one size fits all it's it's whatever you have fits your needs um, but this is how I've done it and so I'm going to take you through the steps and yes, not everybody has a tractor. And yes, not everybody has a barn. And yes, not everybody has a garage that they can fit this stuff in. This is how I do it. Use bits and pieces of it. And I'm not showing off here. I'm sharing so you can um, so you can make your life a bit easier. So today's wood moving day. Um, I have about a half a pallet left in my garage kind of spit and snow rain and and this is real and so this is how I go through the process sorry I talk too much this is what you get so let's go to the main wood stack first so hey folks if you're watching me you probably googled burning wood without a wood shed or your subscriber or you you know you searched it on the YouTube what have you um, so these are my wood stacks and I try to maintain uh, two additional years of wood on site. Um, and that's just so that I have good seasoned wood. If I've got to sell a little bit, if I want to gift some of it, but I want to stay ahead. Um, and so that's me. One summer I hurt my arm, it was no worry. I had the wood array split and stacked. But what I do is I try to keep some of it covered. So this is some wood that, um, my son will sell for uh, campfire type wood um, and we'll use some if we need to for syruping and then we have our stacks of ash and you'll see at this end I have it covered and so if need be I can always come along and take some wood from there so our wood seasoned out here for about two seasons then we put it on the pallet. Late summer, uh, fall, I will take that wood and I will start to put it onto these pallets. And I've got 12, 13, uh, some get destroyed, some get built. And so uh, it takes about four pallets to equal a cord. And so I will put these on these pallets. After I'm done mowing, uh, for the season, I will start to move those pallets up closer to the house, the barn, um, fairly flat ground so I can access them. And then what I've used is, and I don't do it all, but I will start to lay some old roofing material on top just to keep the rains off. And you can see the pallets are there just to hold it down. If you had rocks, if you had, if you wanted to screw it down to the top of the pallet, that would work well too. Um, before we had the tractor, you know, I had a woodshed here and it was, it, it got a new tarp every year for its roof. Uh, it was pretty poor shape, uh, always full of squirrels, always, you know, you know, you know the woodshed, um, but it was a waste of a building. It wasn't a very good building. But for me to build a building just to store the wood, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, roofing metal is pretty cheap and most of the time it's free. Uh, this plastic, plastic fiberglass type roofing here, this gray stuff, uh, that was given to me as well. So what I am, the goal today is to move wood from here to there. So once I am ready to move more garage into the, once I'm ready to move more wood pallets into the garage, I take them out of the barn. So this wood will then go into the barn. 
So I'll, I'll have to speak over the uh, tractor. Tractor's warming up. Uh, me and a couple of my students a couple years back built these forks. They're not pretty, but they do a pretty good job. Um, they're not completely square, but once I said, said it before, they do the trick and they haven't failed yet. Plan on painting them, but you know. So then I moved the firewood from the outside spot to inside the bar. And usually it will sit in here for three or four weeks, depending on how much I bring in. And as you can see, that wood, I try to leave a little bit of space in between them. And, and this wood will then have the, the time to dry. Um, and, and just, it's already seasoned, but to get that surface moisture off. Uh, now, like I said before, not everybody has barn space, but what I know is if you're gonna make it a priority to heat with wood, you need to make it a priority to have dry firewood. Uh, that, that's, that's a dog. So let me take you into the garage. So just like anybody's garage, I got this and that. Um, so that is what's left of the remaining pallet. I will move that pallet over to this side and then I can put three more pallets in. I try to sweep up what's underneath it and, and kind of clean that up. I've got some tractoring to do. Uh, I've got to move this and that and then I'll bring you back in to kind of show you what things look like when they're actually put into place. So hey, I said it before, I'll say it again. You can do whatever you want, but if you're gonna make it a priority to heat with wood, you should make it a priority to keep your wood dry. And so this is how I do it. Uh, so, mood firewood, uh, nothing special about it. I lift it up with the forks. I move it from point A to point B. You know, from outside to the barn, barn to the garage, garage to the wood stove. So once I'm done, that's what it looks like. Uh, my garage is 26 feet deep. Since I have a barn, I don't really have to keep a whole lot of uh, life in the garage. So that, that, that is helpful um, to be able to use this space during winter for firewood storage. So that's how I do it. That's how I live life without a wood shed. Um, if you stuck around this long, thanks. Um, so thanks for sharing your time with me. Have a great day. Bye now.